The Appalachian Trail is an interstate hiking trail located in the eastern United States, spanning a length of 2,198 miles long from end to end. It is the longest hiking exclusive trail in the entire world and spans across many of the U.S.'s eastern states, with portions of the trail being located in the states of Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Vermont, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Maine. The concept of the trail was first conceived in the year 1921 and it proved to be a popular idea, with work on the first stretch of the trail beginning two years later in 1923. After numerous setbacks regarding the land that the trail was to be built on that ensued over the course of the next decade and a half, the entirety of the 2,198 miles of the trail was finally completed in the year 1937. The first full traversal of the entire 2,198 miles of the trail in a single, uninterrupted journey, which is known in modern times as a thru-hike, is a topic that has been the subject of debate for decades, as it was first claimed to have been accomplished by a man named Earl Schaefer in the year 1948. Much of the controversy surrounding his historic thru-hike came from the fact that he attempted the journey alone with minimal contact, meaning that he only had a pair of letters to prove his accomplishment as he had written a letter announcing his departure in Georgia on April 4th and later another from Maine on August 5th announcing that he had completed the journey. Notably, Schaefer was an able-bodied young World War II veteran and much of the initial skepticism from the time was regarding how unbelievable his accomplishment seemed as every attempt to do so in the years prior had proven to be a wildly unsuccessful endeavor. The disbelief regarding whether a thru-hike was truly possible was further quelled three years later in 1951 when three men individually accomplished successful thru-hikes that were better documented than Schaefer's attempt had been. However, most of the over 3 million hikers that visit the trail each year do not attempt through hikes, as some avid hikers, without multiple months to spare to spend attempting a through hike, complete the entire span of the trail in separate segments, which is known as a section hike. And the story of today's video covers one such visitor to the Appalachian Trail in the year 2013, a 66 year old woman named Geraldine Largay. Geraldine was an avid hiker who adored spending time in the great outdoors and on the trail, and had endearingly earned the nickname Inchworm amongst her hiking friends due to her relaxed demeanor and breezy pace while on the trail. On April 23, 2013, Geraldine and her friend, a woman named Jane Lee, met at a trailhead in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, to begin their planned, approximately 1,100 mile long, months long journey to the northern tip of the trail in Maine. Geraldine and Jane would be assisted logistically by Geraldine's husband during this trip, who would meet with the duo at various points along the way to bring them food and other supplies that they needed, as he was eager to support Geraldine's dream hike but he wasn't such a keen hiker himself. Over the coming months, Geraldine and Jane made solid progress along their planned route following the trail, and by the end of June, they were reaching the home stretch of their journey as they had made it all the way to New Hampshire. However, on June 30th, their thus far well-planned trip would be derailed, as unfortunately Jane received urgent news from her family and was forced to immediately withdraw from the trip to attend to these matters. This situation posed a bit of a predicament for Geraldine, as the duo had traveled nearly a thousand miles on the trail together and had come so close to reaching their end goal in Maine. While she was a confident hiker, following Jane's withdrawal from the trip, Geraldine was initially apprehensive 
about continuing the trip on her own as she suffered from anxiety for which she took medication regularly and furthermore she had garnered a bit of a reputation amongst her hiking buddies for her tendency to get lost which had happened on several prior hikes however upon pondering her predicament for a while she decided that she was certain that she could finish the final stretch of the hike alone as she would still be assisted by her husband at various points along the remainder of the way. And so, over the next few weeks, Geraldine continued to slowly but steadily trudge her way along the Appalachian Trail towards its northernmost point in Mount Cotadine in Maine. By the evening of July 21st, Geraldine had reached Poplar Ridge, a location along the Appalachian Trail in western Maine, where she decided to stop for the night at a lean-to there, which, for those of you who may be unacquainted, are essentially a raised platform with a roof situated along hiking trails that provide a source of basic shelter and a location up off of the ground for backpackers to utilize along their treks. That evening, Geraldine would not be spending the night at the Poplar Ridge lean-to by herself, as another group of hikers would join her there shortly after her arrival, and she quickly befriended them with her endearing enthusiasm about hiking, leaving such an impression on the hikers that one of them decided to capture a photo of Geraldine to remember her by at approximately 6.30 a.m. the following morning, July 22nd, before they parted ways. However, unbeknownst to the photographer at the time, this sentimental memento would serve as a crucial piece of evidence of Geraldine's potential whereabouts, as this would be the last time she would be definitively seen alive again. After departing the Poplar Ridge lean-to on the morning of July 22, 2013, Geraldine continued slowly but steadily along the trail and towards her end goal, which was now less than 200 miles away. As the morning hours progressed, Geraldine felt the need to relieve herself, and as there wasn't just a bunch of toilets built along the Appalachian Trail, she did what most people do when they need to go. She wandered off the trail into the surrounding woods a little bit to afford herself some privacy while she attended to her business. After she had finished relieving herself in the bushes, Geraldine attempted to make her way back to the trail. However, due to the dense woodland brush in the area obscuring her view, she wasn't able to spot it and began to wander through the woods, growing flustered as she was still unable to find her way back to the trail, and she was quickly coming to the realization that she had gotten herself lost. At 11.01 a.m., Geraldine turned on her cell phone and wrote a text to her husband that read, quote, In some trouble. Got off trail to go BR. Now lost. Can you call AMC to see if a trail maintainer can help me? Somewhere north of Woods Road. XOX, it read. However, unfortunately for Geraldine, the cell service in the area where she had wandered from the trail was very spotty and her text was never received by her husband. Geraldine likely knew the importance of notifying her husband of her predicament and her potential location, and so she apparently decided to forgo her efforts to find the trail again, and instead headed for higher ground in an apparent effort to get better cell service. However, despite spending the rest of the 22nd attempting to find service, she was unable to do so, and then she spent the entire next day, July 23rd, repeatedly attempting to send her husband another text that read, quote, Lost since yesterday. Off trail three or four miles. Call police for what to do, please. It read. However, similarly to the previous day, she had no luck as she was unable to get any service to her phone. On the evening of the 23rd, 
Geraldine again pivoted her course of action as she knew authorities would be notified of her disappearance by her husband after she failed to show up at one of their scheduled meeting points in Wyman Township that day. And so, Geraldine set to work locating what she regarded as a suitable campsite to await rescue and decided to settle in a clearing under the canopy of some hemlock trees on a bed of pine needles where she set up her tent, spread out a reflective thermal blanket between two trees to assist potential air rescuers in their search for her and began to make herself at home while she awaited help. The following morning on July 24th, after Geraldine had failed to show up the previous day at their meeting point as they had arranged, and having heard nothing further from her, her husband notified authorities that she was missing, and efforts to locate Geraldine's whereabouts began immediately, as numerous volunteers began to comb the area between where the couple had last rendezvoused and the point where they were sent to rendezvous the previous day and news of her disappearance was broadcast to the public asking for their assistance in locating her, which is when she was recognized by the hiker who had taken the photo of her at the lean-to, which her husband confirmed was indeed Geraldine, which narrowed the expanse of wilderness to search for her within significantly. Over the following few days, search and rescue teams combed through the dense woods in their efforts to locate Geraldine, assisted by aircraft, both helicopters and planes, sent tracking dogs and searchers on horseback as the rest of the volunteers searched everywhere they could on foot in an extensive effort to locate her. However, just under a week later, on July 30th, after several days of extensive combing of the surrounding woodlands, search and rescue teams still hadn't located even the slightest trace of her, as her campsite in the Hemlock Grove was well hidden within the trees from on the ground, and the tree's canopy above her obscured her camp and the reflective thermal blanket she had strung out between two trees from view from above. And thus, on July 30th, the large-scale search efforts to locate her were called off, although some smaller-scale search efforts to locate her continued over the following days until August 4th, when the official search efforts were again scaled back, with only a handful of volunteers continuing the search for her over the following few days. But as those days turned into weeks, and the weeks to months, very little hope would remain of locating Geraldine Larguet alive, as two years after she had initially disappeared, her final whereabouts still remained unknown. While she bided her time at her campsite beneath the hemlock trees awaiting her rescue, Geraldine decided to document her misadventures in her diary. As the days passed and her supplies dwindled to nearly none, Geraldine, unfortunately, was forced to come to the realization that the rescue that she had been awaiting wasn't coming, and that her modest campsite within the Hemlock Grove would become her final resting place, and Geraldine continued to chronicle her thoughts daily until August 10th in her final journal entry which she dated as August 18th, 2013. She heartbreakingly scrawled in her journal, quote, When you find my body, please call my husband George and my daughter Carrie. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead and where you found me, no matter how many years from now. The entry read, Clearly, Geraldine was aware that locating her remains would likely take some time. And so, she sheathed the journal within the safety of a Ziploc bag to preserve it from water damage before she curled up in the warmth of her sleeping bag for the final time. On October 14th, 2015, a private contractor who was in the process of conducting a forestry survey as part of an environmental impact study on behalf of the U.S. Navy, which owned said land, 
was shocked when during his work, he happened to cross Geraldine's campsite. The site was located on land that was used by the US Navy for training purposes and was less than one mile away from the closest point on the Appalachian Trail and just under two and a half miles away from the Poplar Ridge lean-to where she had last been sighted. After inspecting the campsite and peering into the collapsed zipped up tent, he caught sight of Geraldine's remains and immediately contacted authorities to inform them of his morbid discovery. Officials arrived on site not long after, accompanied by an Animal Planet film crew who were filming nearby for the upcoming season of their show Northwood's Law when they had caught wind of the surveyor's discovery. Considering that the campsite had sat exposed to the elements for over two years at the time of its discovery, officials found that the campsite was well organized and tidy, and many of her possessions, including her journal, were still in pristine shape thanks to her foresight of sealing them in plastic Ziploc bags to prevent them from being damaged by the elements. Notably, amongst the items that officials recovered from the site was a water bottle that was still approximately half filled with water. Following the documentation of her possessions, her body was handed over to the medical examiner to determine her cause of death. The medical examiner's report listed her cause of death as inanition due to prolonged environmental exposure. The report also notably found no evidence of foul play, which had been suspected by a number of outside observers who had been following the case. I'll leave a link to this medical examiner's report in the description of this video if you'd like to examine it for yourself. The discovery of Geraldine's remains would also finally give much needed closure about the circumstances of her death to her loved ones, who found solace in the fact that she had not met a violent or miserable end as her journal had revealed that she had remained the coherent, meticulous, sensible, upbeat woman she had always been known to be up until the very end, and that she had died a peaceful death in her tent, nestled within the hemlock grove, surrounded by the beauty of the wilderness that she adored so very much. Thank you all for watching.